right, Revelation Wellness Community, this week, I have a new friend for you. I'm introducing you to Allison Cook, PhD, and also the author of Boundaries for Your Soul. I love the subtitle of How to Turn Your Overwhelming Thoughts and Feelings into Your Greatest Allies. Uh, this book came out in 2018, but she also has a new one coming out soon. So we're going to get some um, uh, kind of fresh on uh, what the Lord's been rolling around in, in Allison's heart. So Allison, welcome to the Revelation Wellness Podcast. I am so thrilled to be here. Well, tell our listeners a little bit about yourself. They know where you are. They can picture um, you, Allison, as as the messenger you're bringing us to. Yeah, my family and I are actually in the tr in transitioning uh, to Wyoming, which is where I'm from originally. We've been in the New England area. The pandemic sort of opened up some options for us with the remote work. Um, yep. We love being near the mountains. We're big outdoors enthusiasts. Um, and uh, we just, so so for us, that, that, trend, that ability to be near the mountains um, and um, just bringing hiking and all that back into our life. Think about yes. the work we do. It has been so nourishing. I tend to focus in on the soul and the spirit and the emotions and that, that embodied piece has just yes. been such a gift to our family of late. So that's, that's. Wow. I always say it is nice when you get into an external environment that maybe echoes what you would long for internally, right? Like Exactly. might feel like things are busy and loud and whatever inside, but when you get into the vast expanse of the outdoors, deep calls to deep is what exactly. we talk about. I don't know if any of you ever heard of green, is it green therapy? They call it like outdoor, yes. Yes. Is that, that elements of the outdoors does something to us that yes. no other place can. So tell it, how did you get into this field? A little story, your backstory, maybe how the Lord brought you to where you are today with the message that you bring. Yeah, so I, I grew up in a Christian home. In college, I really came to a deep love with love affair mm -hmm. with Jesus. I, it's the only way I can describe it. Just mm -hmm. came alive and mm -hmm. loved God, still love God. I don't want to put that in the past tense. <laughs> really sought, sought yeah. to know God. And what I figured out over my 20s is I didn't know myself. Oh, come I on. knew God, but I was now out of touch it. with myself. And so I became really interested in psychology and also just really always observing people around me was mm -hmm. a, just back to when I was a kid. So I started studying counseling. I went to a seminary to study counseling and then went on to get my PhD. It's a, it's a joint degree in psychology and theology. So nice. I was always interested in how do these two things go together? Yeah. yeah. Um, how does knowledge of God kind of impact how I understand myself? How does it how I understand myself impact my relationship with God. And so yeah. um, it really came out of my own quest, you know, and then I started work as a therapist and just the privilege of entering into other people's stories mm -hmm. and learning um, from other people just really, and, and then bringing that together with the, the psychological healing with the spiritual component yeah. has really become my area of specialty. Man, you are, she is talking our language, everyone. You know how this is this embodied faith that I'm, I'm a hundred percent, you know, a soul and spirit, but I also bring a hundred percent of me physically and how this tension we feel between both um, can be so rattling. And I think it's just exciting. We have voices of people are saying, we can talk about psychology and yeah. therapy and still say, God, it's, you know, he's the ultimate authority and reign and rule, but we also have these things. I love it in scripture when Jesus talks, um, the Pharisees come to him and they are like, you, well, who is this guy eating with sinners and, and, you know, tax collectors. And he says, it's not, I didn't come for the righteous. I came for the sinner. I didn't yes. come for the person that's well and doing good. It's the sick. And yes. we all come a little sin sick and hit in different places and beliefs yes. that we have. Yes. So in Revelation Wellness, we talk a lot about emotional health. How or why is emotional health so closely tied with physical health? And from your perspective, tell us more. That's such a great question. I love that you, you integrate these two. Um, so emotions are stored in the body. That's yes. the answer, right? They're All right, you're going to get a bell on that one. I have my little bell. <laughs> Remember that emotions are stored in the body. Yep. Right. And so we tend to think of our emotional life and our spiritual life out here mm -hmm. and then our physical life. But mm -hmm. it's all tied together, these emotions. And so as a therapist, even in my own body, I have learned over time, you know, I'll, I'll watch a client say, well, I'm fine. And I'm seeing their, you, you know, their shoulders tensed and they've got this tight energy. Well, it's okay. I don't mind, you know, and it's like, oh, mm -hmm. whoa, mm -hmm. right. All of that emotion that you're not acknowledging is right there in your body. Yeah. And so sometimes we have to start with the body 
to yeah. get to the emotions. Sometimes the emotions take us into the body, but they are absolutely intertwined. I love that. I hope you heard that, that sometimes we can start with the body to get the emotions or the emotions will get to the body. And I think for me at Revelation, Revelation Wellness, you guys as listeners, you know, we're like, well, let's just go for a walk. Let's get in our body. And yeah. I know in some realms called foot up therapy, like just move your feet and it'll work its way up to this cognitive place. And sometimes cognitively can, well, can go the other way. So tell us more about our emotions being stored in our bodies. Can you elaborate on that more and, and how it shows up and maybe why? Yeah, so a lot of the, the research right now, there's a lot going on with the brain, right? We know that the yeah. emotions are in the amygdala. Yeah. Um, and a lot of what happens and the, the approach that I use, we, we deal a lot in memory. And so mm. if you think about memory, right? It's this abstract idea, but it's, it's part of your brain. Mm. And so these emotions, when, when we get wounded, as you said, every one of us at some point in life picks up, we call them yeah. burdens, but whatever you want to call them, yeah. you pick up a wound. It's oftentimes, especially childhood wounds stored in that memory, which is a different part of your brain, yeah. which is connected to the emotion. And this is all sort of in the lower part of the brain. And then at the, the upper part of the brain, we have this prefrontal cortex, right? That is our executive function, our decision-making, our, but when those things are disconnected, mm -hmm. we're disintegrated, we're, we're fragmented now. Mm -hmm. And then you bring the nervous system into it, right? Where we have our mm -hmm. fight, fight response that's coming all the way up from our gut. And, and it might be bypassing that executive function altogether. And we just have an mm -hmm. impulse. We lash out of an emotion because our whole nervous system has mm -hmm. been yeah. triggered, right? And so yeah. how do we heal that? Well, a lot of times as Christians, we hear, mm -hmm. and they're not bad messages, they're, they're, they're true, but it's something like, well, I need to, um, you know, I shouldn't be anxious. That's, that's wrong, mm. right? And so I'm gonna will. Mm. So that, that's this more intellectual, this rational, this prefrontal cortex part of your brain saying, stop being anxious. But that has no bearing upon what's happening in your nervous system. That's firing up right? It, it doesn't work. It's not that simple. And this is where as you call, we call them bottom up approaches, where as you learn to calm the mm. firing of that nervous system, you're connecting. And there's just so many layers to this, but you're connecting different parts of your brain and you're opening up space to where there's connection mm. internally. And so you become more aware of what that emotion is. And there's a pause in there where you actually have some conscious choice over how you want to metabolize that emotion, right? And so it's, a, it's this coordinated effort between the body and the mm. conscious mind. And really the root of it all is this compassionate presence. Oh, that's good. All these things that are happening inside the nervous system, inside your brain, where you start to be able to manage or lead yourself mm. through some of these painful reactions that yes. are stored in memory from maybe yes. years and years and years ago. Yes, that's so good. Oh my God, elaborate more on compassionate presence. What does that mean? What does that look like in my life to live with compassionate presence? Right, exactly. So again, this is the, the when I see the client who comes in and is tense and, and, and just holding all that tension in her body and saying, I shouldn't feel that way. Mm. That's the opposite, right? Of that's that internal critic. Yeah. It's also a shaming, right? Shaming. When I feel like when we should on ourselves, I say it a lot, you guys, I said, should not the other one. I, when we should on ourselves, yeah. there's some shame thing connected. A hundred percent. It is, it is, that is, and shame, we know disintegrates. It fragments, yes. it keeps yes. all those different parts. A lot of this, I love the work of Kurt Thompson, the soul yes. of shame. That's yeah. wonderful um, about what shame does inside the body. So yeah. the opposite of that, and our book is all about, so, so the opposite of that is teaching yourself compassionate attention. So when you have that, you notice, let's say the tension, yes. instead of trying to fight it, you, you get curious about it yes. and you say, oh, I wonder what's happening. Hmm. I just, my whole body just tensed up. Hmm. I wonder what happened. And curiosity is sometimes an easier first step. Uh, sometimes it's hard to go right to compassion. 
Correct. So curiosity at least opens up. Right. And yeah. then you start to get to know, you start to wonder and you start to say, what just happened there? And that's mm. where you start to come alongside of yourself with that compassionate presence, mm. as opposed to stop doing that. It shifts to, I wonder what's happening. Mm. Right. And it just, it, your whole body opens up. It opens up more space, literally yeah. within that whole way in which your nervous system connects up to your brain for more of that calm creative compassionate presence mm. where the holy spirit lives inside mm -hmm. to begin to breathe a little more life and a little more wholeness into whatever it is that mm. is causing you pain and isn't it true i mean we, we always have to go back to the genesis of who we are as people in genesis god creates his created intention of creating is to be with us like he yes. wants he wanted to be with us that was always his heart intention sin separates us Jesus paid a price so we could come back to him. So if you're a Christian walking with Jesus or believing in Jesus, even though, right, we, that's where we battle because I should do better. I know scripture. Oh, that sermon really convicted me. And then we push harder, study more, do the thing. And really it's we miss compassion. And when uh, scripture talks about Jesus shows up and he looks at the people and he has compassion on him because he sees them like a sheep, like sheep without a shepherd. That's yes. all he wants to do is shepherd us, right? Doesn't a shepherd doesn't show up and beat us with a stick and submit us into you know, doing what he wants to do. He's a good shepherd, that whole Psalm 23. So I love that picture of reminding us that the compassion, without compassion, don't you think it's just, it's almost feels inevitable or impossible to integrate without compassion. We, yes, we, I, we, I don't, I believe we do not heal in the context mm. of shame. We heal in the context of, compassion and people mistake that that doesn't if you think about how jesus interacted with people he was very honest yes but there was yes. no shame yeah and that that's the as christians again we we and i do believe that is one of the things the enemy you know it's almost like he he thinks if we if he can get us to beat ourselves up and we think that's the right thing to do that's a great way to thwart actually the healing work that god brings in mm. which isn't to pretend you know god doesn't you know, he, he knows us, but there's no shame mm -hmm. in that sense of being mm -hmm. known yeah. by God. And we can learn, we can train ourselves to recognize when you think about the sheep, know the voice of their shepherd, mm -hmm. that shaming inner critic is not the voice of the shepherd. And so the first Amen. thing to do is to really notice that mm -hmm. and, and not listen, you know, say, oh, that, I don't think that's the voice of my shepherd. Yeah. And that, and cultivate that. What is that voice of love and compassion? This thing is hard. I might not even like how I'm responding to mm. it, but can I take that deep breath? Mm. Again, calm the nervous system and invite yeah. in that loving voice of the good shepherd. Revelation Wellness, you know, we've we talked about it in all the training we do is that that breath. There's the between a what is it between stimulus and response? There's the pause or there's a moment, there's a space. I think that's um, I can't remember who wrote that, but that's a quote from someone. Between stimulus and response, there's a space. Like take a breath, learning yes. to breathe. And when we breathe, take it in, in, in a deliberate breath. Then the nervous system, the parasympathetic, Revelation Wellness. You know the, the we escape out of fight flight, kind of settle into. I'm gonna rest and digest in this. And there's a presence of my enemy is here. Okay, I'm going to sit down at the table. There's a feast prepared before me yeah. in the presence of my enemy. So Allison, how do we know if an emotion has gotten extreme? Like if we're, we're not really walking in that presence of compassion. Yeah, so that, that's a cue. These are, we call them in our book, trailheads. So if you think about walking down a trail, you know, a trailhead is that sign yeah. Um, and it's huh. when we're, we're short with people, we're, we're lashing out at our loved ones. We're mm -hmm. maybe binge watching television or, or taking an extra glass of wine and, and, and it's happening subconsciously, right? We're not, we're not saying to ourselves, oh, I'm going to drink five glasses of wine tonight. It's like you just, you find yourself sort of doing it or you find yourself yelling and you're like, why am I doing that? Or, yeah. or sad, right? These are cues. And again, this is where yeah. we're tempted to come in with a hammer, right? And beat ourselves up. But instead, those are cues. Mm -hmm. That emotion is trying to tell me something. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. So can I pause, as you say, mm -hmm. and pay attention instead? And instead of, mm -hmm. instead of beating myself up, say, I w again, I wonder what's going on. I'm angry. Okay. I'm part of me is angry. Mm -hmm. I wonder what's going on. And that, so the, it's, we tend to notice it when, when an emotion gets extreme, it's when we're acting in ways we, we later, we're like, what happened? Why did I do that? What happened there? Mm -hmm. um, and it's just, it, and when we, when we beat ourselves up, it actually creates more tension inside, mm -hmm. which makes it even harder to shift out of that. Right. So, yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah, it's that when you, you know, I think people, interestingly enough, when they have a big response to something, we can get a choice of, will I step back to observe that I did not do that well? That doesn't feel good, but it's so interesting for people. I know for me in the past, having a big response felt very, that's what you do. That's yes. how I protect myself, that, that you kind of had that coming and you know, like we can get around it. We don't have to worry about it. like, we can make it better, but you yes. deserve that response. It almost, it's that again, back to a uh, justice or judgment. Like I'm justified in my behavior because you did this, right? That, right. that doesn't help us to actually heal in right. the presence of, of compassion. Right. So I think that's a, that's something I had to learn was, Hey, your response or your feelings aren't bad, Elisa. That's right. <laughs> you get to have all the feelings. But when they are now projecting on others, you're hurting others, it's not beneficial. I just get so fascinated about you, Allison. When I read, I've just been in love right now with the gospels and reading Jesus, just how he walked in his skin on yeah. the earth, dealing and with every day. There's somebody wanted something of him, asking questions yeah. of him, misunderstood, rejected, yeah. or highly accepted people wanted to make him king. Like, yeah. How did he do it, Jesus? And I think we have to remember that he, because he did it, we can too. We have yeah. access yeah. to something that where we can have our feelings and yet not, not sin, right? And and two things about that that I think are so that's such a great, beautiful way to put it. Jesus had a full range of emotions. Yes, we, we see Jesus grieve. We see Jesus yeah. get angry, yeah. and the difference is, and and our model there is. We, we like to talk about in our book, speaking up on behalf of an emotion mm -hmm. versus speaking from it. That's and so good. when Jesus was angry or even had a harsh, you know, a sharp word for someone, which mm. he did, it wasn't a reaction. It wasn't an, in the moment, I just lost my cool. It was with intention. Yeah. Right? And, and so for us, the model is when we're feeling a lot, it doesn't necessarily mean that to, to say that we need to manage our emotions or lead our emotions doesn't mean we'll never go to someone and say, Hey, I need to have a tough conversation with you. Mm -hmm. But when we're speaking on behalf of that emotion and we're regulated in our bodies. We're settled mm -hmm. in our, we're not in fight fight. We're centered. We're aware of that angry part of us, but it's not leading us. We're leading it. And we're letting that anger in a healthy way, lead us to advocate for ourselves or someone else in a way that is intentional, is mindful, isn't going to do harm, hmm. right? And that is the motto we see in Jesus of emotional regulation. It's not the okay. absence of those emotions. Okay. Yeah, Amen. that's so good. Okay, I've got just a jump in traction saying something like, I want to ask this, ask Allison, who's very, you know, acknowledged in, in, in mental health and well-being. Uh, right now we are you know, doing, uh, we have a a challenge or it's kind of it's any donation amount gets people in to do this thing called exercise your mental muscle, which is a 21 day, just biblical mindfulness meditation, asking people to be still for 21 days. And we'll tell you, Allison, it's been the lowest attended. No one wants it. People are walking right by it. It's been humbling to me because we oh. usually give stuff, people things to do. You're like, okay, we'll try that. You know, kind of keeping active. This is the first time we've ever said, Hey, we're going to just not do anything to kind of reset, break up with the things we think we need to do. Uh, so you mentioned like this mindfulness thing. How is it possible? I'm just like, help me understand. Is it possible for people to have emotional health and well-being and mental health without their ability to pause? No. <laughs> and I think, 
I think okay. pausing can look, I, I'm just so intrigued by what you're sharing because I think that is true. We want that fix hmm. without the work that it takes. And it's the same, you know, it's exercising any muscle. Mm -hmm. um, you have to practice daily. Mm -hmm. And so what I would say is the pause can take different forms for different people. Hmm. So the pause can, for some folks, movement, a mindful walk mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. counts as a pause, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Or um, mindful stretching. It doesn't mm -hmm. have to be sitting in a chair with your eyes closed, mm -hmm. you know. That's true. Um, right. or, or, you know, just even, but, but what people don't really, just even get it for me, because I was so uh, disconnected from my body for so mm -hmm. long, just lived in my mind, mm -hmm. literally just sitting with, with posh, healthy posture yeah, um, and being mindful of the way that feels Good. and then checking in inside your body. That I, I use a lot of um, the metaphor for, in my world. It's a metaphor of core strength. Yeah. It's you're developing. It's not the most glamorous of muscles. Yeah. It's not the thing you see on the outside. Right. That's right. But that right. internal core strength, when you have that ability yeah. to be with yourself from the inside out, to, mm. to center yourself on the Holy spirit in your body, with your emotions, that's where strength comes Good. from. There People we always go. come to me. How do I set boundaries? And they kind of want that one, two punch. And I'm like, actually, and, and it's the same in my world. This is the thing. People don't want to hear this, but it's like, it's actually that daily practice. Yeah. Really strong inside of yourself. Mm -hmm. That's where that, where then when you're in the moment, you just kind of know what to say. It's not yes. this flashy, it's, it's this, no, yeah. thank you. Or, you know, it's, it's not this flashy of like the big biceps. It's this, I know who I am. I know whose I am. And I yeah. know what I need to do in this moment. Yeah. So I, I, I hear That's you good. on that. It's not exactly always what people want to hear, but oh my goodness, is it life-changing and life-giving? It, it is. It, it just, and, I, and in the time we're living in where there's so much yes. to stimulate and so yes. much yes. to hit on the pleasure side of our brain. And we, yes. we, we now, it's interesting, like once upon a time, you know, I think it would be pleasurable to just sit outside and enjoy the weather, right? Or, so, or enjoy the, the porch and just sit. And we just don't do that anymore. Now we're constantly, something is bringing information or stimulating us in a way yes. that we've lost the pure, simple pleasures of quiet or beautiful sunset or things that we, you know, yes. we're not mindful of anymore. Our minds are full, all right, but not, yeah. not so mindful to, to attach back to ourselves. I love yeah. that idea of the core coming and making your decisions from there. And you mentioned boundaries. Can we talk more about yeah. that? Like, what does it mean to set boundaries with um, thoughts and feelings and even our, our own thoughts and feelings and maybe a little bit with others as well? Sure. I mean, so, so to, to get back to, I love the word, the pause, right? The more mm -hmm. you have, you're able to take that pause, even just for a few minutes each morning and check in. Yeah. You're yeah. aware of your own emotions. You're aware of what's going on in your own nervous system. When you're conscious of that, when you're aware of that, you then look at your day and you have a much better sense before that day gets the better of you of, man, I, I'm dealing with a little bit of grief or I'm dealing with a little bit of anxiety, right? Mm -hmm. And instead, so when we talk about gentle boundaries internally, we say, man, I need to create a little space for that. I don't have to let that take over my whole day, Wow, that's good. but I do need to create a little space for that part of me that is hurting today. And so what that might mean. And so then again, you're, you're just looking at your day going, what that might mean is I might need a half an hour after work to take a walk. And that's something mm -hmm. I'm going to do for that part of me that's hurting. And so you're kind of, compart it's, it's a little bit of comp com healthy mm -hmm. compartmentalization. You're, right. I, I'm, I'm not going to deny that grief. I don't need to let it take me over or that mm -hmm. anger, whatever it is, but I am going to mindfully create a little space. So all of a sudden you've decided how, what you need from your day. Mm -hmm. And then when it comes to the external boundary, when someone says, Hey, you know, we're all going here after work, you've already checked in you know what, what I need during that yeah. half hour is, is a walk by myself or mm. what I need during that half hour is. And so that, that boundary with someone else sort of is, and I'm not saying this is always easy because, you know, some folks kind of make it hard for you to do that, but you yeah. know, you yeah. know, and that's what I mean. Mm. You're building that internal core strength to go, this is actually what I need. 
And so it makes those yeses and nos a little bit easier because instead of being like, oh, that's so annoying that that person keeps, it's like, I just know that I need to do this. Mm -hmm. And so I've got to say, no, thanks to this, this Mm -hmm. person over here. Mm -hmm. I think then there's that, that picture of even with Jesus boundaries, um, there was this not quiet as in he didn't say anything, but I guess um, quiet as in a strength under control that, yes. you no, know, like I, no, he didn't have to yell it. He didn't yeah. have to strong arm anyone or play. Uh, what's the other, the opposite is withhold himself from right. people. Well, you don't deserve that fish and loaf today. Like he, he was just quiet confidence, a, a steadfast confidence in who God was and his mission yes. and what he was there for. Yes. So his, his boundaries were real clear because if it was not what the father wanted, nope, not doing that today. And <laughs> just stay the course. I love, and I love he, that picture. He would quietly leave the crowds yes. to get what he needed, right? To nourish his own soul. Yes. And like you're saying, it wasn't always this flashy. He just, and they would sometimes try to find him, you know, but. Right. Or be confused by him. Like, right. why would you leave at the high point of a miracle? You should take the apple, you know, the applause. Like, nope, he would. Yep. Well, that's enough for me. I just love yes. it. He's yes, mysteriously so emotionally healthy. I'm like, I want. That's what yes. I want. I love it. I absolutely love it. So, how do or do we all have overwhelming thoughts and feelings? Is that something like back to my husband? I, I opened this up, you guys, with the fact that I'm married. Y'all know I'm married to my husband's British stiff upper lip. Doesn't mm-hmm. emotions don't really come easy for him, or not don't seem as cued up to the surface. But do we? all have overwhelming thoughts and feelings? Yes. I mean, to some degree, everybody does. There's certainly a spectrum, some more than others. Personality is a factor, wiring, DNA, um, childhood conditioning, all those things are factors, but everybody to some degree has to learn how to balance their emotions. Yeah. Can you tell us some of your personal practices of like how you check in with yourself, how you metabolize your emotional health every day? Just people always curious, what do you do, Allison? Yeah, I, every morning I started, we have this um, five-step um, process for um, dealing with overwhelming thoughts and feelings in our book. And so I added it into my time with mm-hmm. God, because what I found is if I try to go to God in the morning or read scripture, or read my devotion, and my mind is, yes, it's just going through the motions. Come on, right, right. right. So I might as well be honest with God and say, okay, I got it. So what I've started doing is I actually check in with myself first as part mm-hmm. of my spiritual practice. Okay, what's going yeah. on with me? Then I invite God into that. Yeah. Um, and I use these these steps that we talk about in the book, which is really to kind of, it's, it sounds counterintuitive, but the first one is to kind of focus on what the commotion is. So instead of praying it away, getting Good. curious about oh, what, is, what is that that's bugging me writing it down mm-hmm. i write it down um sometimes i do this very simple exercise if it's too overwhelming i call it a meps check in it's um, mental emotional physical spiritual and i try to just in a couple of words mentally emotionally physically spiritually what's going mm-hmm. on with me Good. just to kind of ground myself and then i begin that then i begin my conversation with god having connected to where I'm at that morning. Yeah. That's a, a like in Luke 15, the prodigal son who you knows live in the wants and desires that he wants, but then he comes to himself. And I, I just think that whole coming to myself, come to myself. And it's actually in the story that then he goes to his father. It's in coming to himself that he realizes, wait a minute, my father's, you know, servants have it better than this. Perhaps I could just go be a servant. Okay. Let me go talk to my father. But he had to check in with himself. And I wonder how many people we just don't check with ourselves, where they're maybe a little afraid. I call it like a, a well check or, you know, check the oil under the car. How are we doing today? Yes. Like, am I running yes. low on oil? Are we good? Are we going to burn out today out there out on the streets and yeah. doing what we do uh, so that I can be, get what I, whatever he wants me to have. If I know, you know, he knows what I need, but no. if I don't, yeah. if I don't know what I need, then yes. it's kind of like the people walking by the mindfulness channel. I don't need that. It's like, you yes. need some practice yes. of stillness in your life, but and we do we this know. thing where we kind of want God to do. I, I I talk a lot about spiritual bypassing on my side, and people. This is the thing people are always like, "What?" Because we want to bypass ourselves, and it's yes. all we want God to do all the work. But it's God's kind of like this is a relationship, partnership, right? I wouldn't right. expect my husband to just magically read. You know, it's part of the beauty that God wants. Of course, He knows, but. He wants, we have to 
become aware and bring mm-hmm. that to him. Um, mm-hmm. And I think that's part of how he designed that, that relationship that's that so he good. still wants with us. It's true, isn't it? You, when your child acts out and does something, whatever that you're like, why was that? You know, we get alarmed, like, oh my gosh, what, what are you doing? But you know, there's something, the reason they're doing that. It's when they can come to you and say, this is what I'm feeling, or this is what I'm tempted to do, or this is what I'm struggling with. We're like, oh my God, right? Every parent, <laughs> at least a healthy parent yeah. celebrates, yes. but, the yet, but yet the kid doesn't trust it. And is like, I don't know if I can bring this to you. I'll just act out sideways maybe. And much end up. Yeah. 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 Totally. Oh my goodness. You guys, um, I am so excited that we've met you, Allison, and that we can keep this conversation going, especially as your next book comes out. My goodness, this is right up our alley. Everyone, again, the book is called Boundaries for Your Soul, How to Treat Your Overwhelming Thoughts and Feelings, How to Turn Your Overwhelming Thoughts and Feelings into Your Greatest Allies, Um, available on Amazon, or you can go over to Allison's website, right, on Allison1L, everyone, Allison Cook, Ph.D., dot com. Allison, before you go, would you tell us if there's one thing you want people to know? One thing today that you're like, just I just know this, what would it be? I I would say to, to go back to the shepherd, what, what you talked about, what I've learned in my work these last two decades as a psychologist is that every part of who you are matters to God. So Mm -hmm. Jesus went to find the lost sheep. He left the 99 to find the one that applies sort of to people, but it also applies to every part of you Mm -hmm. and every part of you that carries some wound or some pain or some shame, Mm -hmm. that part matters to God. Mm -hmm. And he wants to do whatever it takes to help bring that in to a healed, healthy, whole relationship, both with you and with him. And I just, I've just found that to be so beautiful that it, he, it, you know, he talks about caring for every hair on our head, but we forget it also applies to our inner yeah. landscape, that those inner parts of us, that painful memory from mm. years ago, that, mm. that wound, that burden, it matters, matters to God. Mm. He is in the business of healing and going after those parts of us. So I just I want to it. provide that word of encouragement for those who are that listening. That is a good word. Every, all of it matters. All yeah. of it matters. That's such yep. a value statement to you guys. Mm-hmm. Uh, one more quick, these are our rapid fire questions that okay. we ask all of our guests. <laughs> Ready? Um, coffee, tea, or kombucha? Which one's your go-to? Coffee. You're a coffee girl. How many yeah. cups a day? Just one, but I love okay. it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, favorite way to move your body? walking, hiking. Yeah. Oh, hiking. Yeah. As you go to Wyoming, you will not yeah. have any lack yeah. of that. Except yeah. what will you do in the winter? Dude, I guess yeah. <laughs> I know. you've got bilateral movement it, done for in scenery. For I'm not, a, I'm not a cardio girl. So for me, walk, I just love both of just the movement it is very metabolizing for me emotionally i i and and just feels good for my body i've i've i have a theory i can't you can debunk it but i feel walking or any rhythmic movement like cycling hiking that right left right left it reminds me a little when i've had emdr done with the bilateral brain stimulation i think it's the poor man's emdr like if i can just get get walking and loosen up some of this tightness, I can access some higher reading, Good. you know, kind of integrating. So, um, and then finally for our, our shoppers out there looking for a good pair of yoga pants, where would you get yours? <laughs> oh, golly. Um, yeah, we, I lived in them, I think for the last year, <laughs> right? Who hasn't? We have all driven the stock up in all the athleisure wear ever to be created. <laughs> I think the ones I finally, I needed the ones with the cell phone pocket. So athleta, I found uh-huh. some. and I do this through my daughter who's way more athletic than I am. I just kind of follow her lead. Um, <laughs> and, uh, she found me some that have, you know, just basic black, but, but they have that little pocket. pocket. I phone. know athleta was the first to come up with that little deal. And now yeah. people are like, I, w- I don't know what to do before. I didn't have a pocket to put my right. phone. So good. Yeah. All right, you guys, Allison, thank you for being here. Head over to allisoncookphd.com. She has freebies. What kind of freebies do you have over there? 
there's three free downloads. I send out a, a newsletter every Thursday, no spam, but I just do a, a blog post on topics related to faith and psychology. But the freebies you get for signing up are a boundaries kickstart guide, a little ebook called Good. She's Better Than Me about Ooh. you know comparison. comparison. And then the third one is um, a, a guided prayer reflection that is kind of what, when you're asking me what I do in the morning, it takes oh. you through that process of bringing what you're feeling into relationship with God. Good. Yeah. Allison's our new friend, everyone, yeah. Revelation Wellness. And we'll be seeing you again soon, Allison. You have a message that we need. It's a timely, timely message. Thank you so much for being Thank here. Thank you. What a Thanks for watching. And remember, this video was brought to you by Revelation Wellness Instructor Training Program. Do you love Jesus and have a passion for fitness and wellness? Or maybe you're tired of the roller coaster of obsessing over and neglecting your body. And you know there has to be more to fitness. Let us equip you to lead others to health and wholeness rooted in Jesus Christ through our faith-based fitness instructor training program. Go to our website to learn more and listen to testimonies of people just like you who are bringing hope and healing to their communities as fitness teacher gospel preachers. Click the link in the description of this video and download a packet to get your journey to health and wholeness through Christ started today.